I'm a big fan of these floating palettes. I, I use them all the time and I have a range of these floating palettes that I use to create things. If you've got floating palettes in your file, you'll find them under Window, Script Palettes, and then you'll find them here if you've got them. Now I have them because I've created some of them. I've got one I use to help me draw details. It draws cavities, it draws building right. When I'm detailing a building, these really speed up my detailing. The ability to place a weatherboard or a piece of timber, it grabs a symbol and puts it in for me. So let me show you some of the basics for this because you can also use them to control your snapping palette down the bottom here. Some people don't like the snapping palette down here, so it's a good idea to learn how to control these custom tool attribute settings so that you can create some of these. Now it's all based on this tools menu at the top here. There's this one here called custom tool attribute. Not a lot of people use this one. Um, there's also this one here for custom selection, so I'll show you how to use that one as well. But they're really useful in creating um, almost like macros that you use again and again. For example, if I wanted to select all of my fixtures that were on my services class, uh, let's say services fixtures or plumbing, I can go custom selection, let's select only, and this is the trick here where you go create a vector script or create a Python script. Let's go to our criteria. So the criteria is that I'm looking for objects that are on a class called, and I think I've called it services fixtures. Now I've just got to be careful because it will only find those objects. Now you can see that it's found 15 objects that match my criteria. So somewhere in my file there are 15 of these objects. Now if you want to you can add additional criteria. For example you can make it search in a layer. The challenge with that is if you go to a different file with a different layer structure you can't just import this. So I'm going to remove that one. Let's click OK and I'm going to create a new palette. So creating a new palette is a great way of doing it. Now I've got one here already called Selections but I'll show you how to use this. So I'm going to call this my Utility Palette. Utility Palette. So that creates a brand new palette. You can see it up here floating around. And that's my Utility Palette so I then select it. And then I call this Select Plumbing. Cool, so that's my select plumbing. Now you notice nothing's happened in my file yet. So what happens when I double click? It's found this object, it's found that object, that object, that object. Now it's only found four objects in this particular layer, but it's actually found the objects in the other layer as well. So just be careful about that. But it does allow you to select all those objects consistently, which is really quite cool. Let's do that again, I'll do another one. So this is a custom selection. We want to select only. We want to execute our script. Let's look at our criteria. The class is, I'm going to look for a wall class. Let's do wall demolished. Wall demolished. Cool. Let's not look inside symbols. We won't look inside those things. We'll put it on our utility palette again. Select it. And we'll call this select demo walls. Trunk. Demo walls. And so it's actually not just going to select walls, it's going to select everything on that class, but I'll call it select demo walls anyway. So let's see what happens. I double click and it selects all my demolished walls. Really handy, this thing to select objects. You might notice it selects things behind other objects, which is really cool. So that's the first step the ability to create these utility palettes that select things. So what's the next thing I'd like to teach you? Well, the next thing I'd like to teach you is how you can create a tool that will create a specific line of a specific line style on a specific class. So maybe it's a polyline. Let's make it a polyline. We want to draw on a class called electrical. So I'm going to create electrical drawings, services, electrical. We're going to go to our attributes palette here. Let's just bring that out so you can see it. That's my attributes palette. So I'm going to make all attributes by class. Cool. Now when I draw an object, there we are, it's on the electrical class and it's got the line style and the line weight and so on. Now I think I'm using black and white only at the moment. So I'll just go up here, uh, black and white only. Let's turn that on. Let's turn that off. Okay, so what color is that? Let's just change that class. So let's go back up to services electrical. Where are we? Services electrical. Let's edit that. 
uh, we'll change that to blue. Let's make it a blue line, 0.13, it's dotted, good, no, got. So now it's a blue line. So that means that every time I create this line, every time I use the polyline or the polygon tool, and the polyline is the one I tend to use, because I can make those, those nice little shapes for my electrical drawings. So we know this works, we know we've got the right tool, we know if we draw it, uh, and I'm just using the first mode, which is the corner vertex, but if you click and drag, so click and drag, it'll actually create a, a Bezier curve, which is quite cool. So we know that works. So back to tools on the menu bar, we're going to go custom tool attribute this time. This is new, so not custom selection, but custom tool attribute. What do we want it to remember? We want it to remember the fill, the pen, the text, the class, and the tool. So all of those things we want it to remember. Let's click OK. We're going to put in a utility palette again, and this is draw electrical. Draw electrical, sweet. Now if I put this back to the none class, back to none, and I draw polyline with the line tool, you notice it's got a black line, it's on the none class, We've got the attributes here. Now what happens when I double click on draw electrical? Now my draw electrical, now you might notice just up here, my class is still the none class, but over here, we've got services electrical as a class for that object. So Vectorworks temporarily puts none away, draws on the services electrical, and then brings the none back again. And you might notice that it chose the tool that I wanted. This is a great way of speeding up your drawing in Vectorworks. So that's magic. Uh, let's do that again. This time I'm going to use the line to a uh, polygon tool. This polygon tool, we're going to go services. Stormwood is what I really want. Soil. That'll do. Services store soil. So this should draw heavy lines for me. Great tools on the menu bar and we'll go custom tool attribute remember all these things okay utilities palette let's save that and we'll call it draw sewer sewer pipes or soil pipes so let's go back to none let's delete the one I've drawn let's draw sewer cool let's draw electrical you notice how quick it is for me to jump between one thing and another because the script sets the class, sets the tool, and so on. This is a really quick way of speeding up your drawing in Vectorworks. Now the question I was asked was, how do you turn what I've just shown you into these snaps? Well, let's have a look. If I go down here and I choose these, and let's say I don't want all those snaps to be on. I just, so I'm going to turn, all of the, uh, turn on the master snap. So just the endpoint and the master snaps. I'm going to turn that one off, turn that one off, turn that one on, turn that one off, turn that one off. So I've turned off a bunch of my my uh, snaps down the bottom here. And I've also, if you if I double click on this, you'll also notice I've turned off several of those. Let's go custom tool attribute. Let's select that again. This time we'll turn off everything except smart cursor settings. Now if we turn on the smart cursor settings, it will activate those things that I've just done. So I'm going to put this on my temp on my utilities palette again, and it's going to be snaps for dimensioning. Oh, that name's already in use, so let's call it snaps for dims. I turn all my snaps back on. Let's turn them all. Uh, which ones? I want that one. That one. That one this one let's turn all those back on there's no quick way of turning these all on okay and now let's save this one so again tools custom tool attribute smart cursor settings utility palette snaps for modeling or, or designing I'll call it oh, it's already in use so snaps for design because I've already created these in this file Okay, so let's have a look. So snaps for dims, double click. Notice down the bottom here, some of my snaps disappeared. If we double click on this one, I've lost some of those snaps. Let's go snaps for design, I'll double click. 
So I've got to get rid of that first. Let's double click. Uh, so all my snaps have turned back on again. And you can see they've all turned back on again. So now I've got this floating palette which I can put anywhere and I can quickly jump between one and the other. So snaps for dims, snaps for design, and it's a quick way of jumping between those different. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. So please give me a thumbs up on this one if you liked it. Uh, and in the comments, tell me which other movies you'd like to see.